Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and I wanted to do a Facebook Live today on how often should you fast? So this is such a popular question that I get all the time. I wrote a blog post on it this morning. I just put a, um, a, a little infograph out on Instagram so you guys could see the frequency um, because I think this is a topic that's not really talked about enough. So when I first heard about intermittent fasting, I, my, my original like takeaway when I looked at the research, and this is five, six years ago, was okay, really impressive, super cool, um, but I could maybe do it every once in a while. I, I mean, would I do intermittent fast every day? I mean, I don't know if any of you had that experience when you first hear that you're supposed to fast 13 to 15 hours every single day. And so I was really apprehensive, but several of my mentors um, that I had been learning from were doing it every day with great results. So I jumped into intermittent fasting only to discover what so many of you guys are discovering, which is that your weight went down, your uh, energy went up, your mental clarity was incredible. For me, the intermittent fasting really helped my hypoglycemia, which seems so counterintuitive, but at the time I, I couldn't go more than two hours without eating. And the minute I put in uh, intermittent fasting into my uh, we daily routine, I started seeing that I could go longer and longer periods without food. It was truly the, truly the thing that got me fat adapted. So when you look at how often you should fast, I think the first thing I want you to think about is to realize that fasting becomes just part of your life. Like as you learn these tools, you just start realizing that it's now we have entered a new day and age where we are not counting calories um, and we are not getting on treadmills for hours and hours trying to hope to, to get our, burn enough calories to get ourselves in shape. We have entered a new era of nutrition and detoxing, and this is where we are compressing our eating window. So I want you to reframe the way that you think about eating and fasting and realize that the goal is not to wake up in the morning and eat all day. The goal is to, de to decide what your eating window is gonna be and what your fasting window is gonna be. So the first step as you start to embark in this fasting world is do intermittent fasting every day. Uh, it becomes a lifestyle, you just skip breakfast. Once you start to get the hang of that, then I encourage my patients to start to stretch that fast out. I like to see people do a 24 hour fast. I think they should do it at least once a week. Uh, it, this does two things. It gets you into a deeper autophagy. It'll get your ketones up a little bit higher. And those of you that are looking to use uh, fasting as a weight loss tool, I really, you're gonna have to, if you're intermittent fasting and you're not losing weight, you're gonna have to push that fast out and you're gonna have to go into 24 hour fasts. My weight loss resistant patients, I even encourage a 36 hour fast. The longer you go in a fasted state, the, the lower your insulin will stay for a longer period of time and you will force your body to go find that stored sugar and it'll start to burn energy from that stored sugar that you stored put there years and years ago. So if you're not losing weight with intermittent fasting, it's time to start to try a 24 to 36 hour fast, okay? so. Every day intermittent fasting, once a week, 24 hour fast. Um, for just general health maintenance, that's like a basis of what I recommend. Now we have some other fasts. There's actually seven fasts that I teach my resetters um, that I work with my patients on. But the next most common fast I would say that I really encourage people to do is either fast mimicking or autophagy fasting. So both of these fasts are lowering protein. The major difference is fast mimicking is lowering calories. And the fast mimicking diet was made popular by Walter Longo. You can go look at his research. He showed that when you lower calories and you lower protein, that you actually start to secrete stem cells. So I think fast mimicking should be done once a month. 
five days, his study was done on a five day period, one time a month for three months in a row, and he saw pancreatic cells regrow. So for general over, overall good health, I think we should all practice fast mimicking at least five days out of every month. This is what we're doing in my resetter group uh, in Facebook. If you want in, just put resetters in the comments and we'll invite you in. Um, we fast as a group, I call it fast training week and there's thousands of people in there and we all fast together. And I would say fast mimicking is one of the most popular ones that we, that we do in there. Um, second type of fast that's also really great and a lot of people like is autophagy fasting. And the purpose behind autophagy fasting is that you're gonna deepen autophagy. Um, you're not necessarily looking for stem cell production, although there's a little bit of an overlap. And the difference with autophagy fasting is you're not counting calories and you can have animal protein. But with both of those different types of fasts, you are lowering your protein under 20 grams. So um, I have a lot of information on that on my YouTube channel, so you can go and I have a whole playlist on autophagy fasting. That's not the purpose of this video. I really wanted you to know how often to do these. So intermittent fasting daily, uh, 24 hour fast at least once a week uh, and fast mimicking and autophagy fasting take a five day period out of every month. I alternate, I'll do fast mimicking one month and then the next month I'll do autophagy fasting. If you're one of these really enthusiastic fasters, you could take five days one week and then two weeks later take another five days. Those are really healing fasts where you're still getting some food, which is cool. Then the Mac Daddy of all fasts is water fasts. M miracles absolutely happen when you do a water fast. Um, there is some incredible research showing that if you were to do two to three water fasts a year, that you, would, you could kill the majority of cancer cells in your body. Um, so now, do we have evidence that that's happening for sure? Not necessarily, but I do feel for prevention of cancer, for prevention of disease, we all should take a five day period or a three day period at least, because at three days you get a lot of stem cells and try a water fast once a year. So it's, it's a hard fast, but those of us who have done it, um, patients I've coached through it, it's amazing. It can heal the body like nobody's business. So, so that's how I look at when to use these. Intermittent every day, once a week, at least once a week of a 24 hour fast. You can do more often if you're trying to drop weight. Um, uh, fast mimicking an autophagy fast. Take a five day period and do five days in a row of those. Again, I love the fast mimicking because of the research on stem cells. Um, and then the water fast once a month. So I hope that helps. If it's helpful, just let me know. Just put helpful in there. These videos are there for you guys to give you tools. I, if, if you've followed me at all, you know that I am such a fan of fasting because we all can do it. We all, and I'm gonna bring you all the research. I'm starting a whole playlist on YouTube called Fasting Heals. I, the first one I'm gonna do is on fasting and chronic pain. Holy cow, is there some incredible research out there on how fasting is helping reduce pain levels for people. And there's, there's a reason why, and I'm gonna show you that. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. If you want in my resetter group, just put resetter. Um, if on Instagram, I take all my concepts and put them into graphics so you can find me there. Um, but enjoy this fasting world we live in. There are so many miracles that are here for you. So as always, I hope that helps.